Hello everyone, Rabbi Rosen here. I hope all is well with you on a very beautiful spring day. We read in the book of Kohelet Ecclesiastes a very important reminder. There is a time for every purpose under the heavens. There is a time to speak and there is a time for silence. With this past week's observance of Yom HaShoah V'Hagvurah, Holocaust Memorial and Resistors Remembrance Day, we are reminded of the power of timely speech. If only the world had spoken out far earlier in the course of all of the Nazi atrocities, how many lives, Jewish and non-Jewish, might have been saved. But the silence was deafening. In the course of the pandemic that we are all still encountering, we know the power of a human voice, a phone call, some kind of outreach that says to somebody, during this time of isolation, you really are not alone. But there are times, of course, where speech is a bit of a problem. We have all been in the situation where we have spoken too much when a bit of silence would have been a far better path to pursue. We've all said inappropriate, inadvertently unkind things because we simply couldn't abide some additional silence, because it made us uncomfortable, perhaps, to remain quiet. In our world, in so many ways, silence is a kind of vacuum, a space that needs to be filled by sound. You go to stores, you go to a restaurant, hopefully those kinds of things can be more common in the months ahead. There's music that is piped in. In the car, there's almost always some sound that we invite to fill that space. When we walk or exercise, so many of us have earbuds on so that we can listen to that book or podcast or more music. We tune in to what we are listening, and in a lot of ways, we tune out the world at large and other people we might encounter on the way. But the portion of Torah that we read this week, Shmini invites a different kind of evaluation of silence. Aaron's two sons, Nadav and Avi, who offer an alien fire in the course of worship, and God strikes them down. We don't know the exact nature of their offense, but we see that Aaron's response is curiously a very simple one, that of silence, Vayidom Aharon. And we don't know if his silence is acceptance or if it's numbness or something in between. But what tradition did with this silence is a very important thing. It taught us that this is a source for etiquette. When you walk into a shiva house, you don't immediately start speaking. Your first course of action is to be quiet. You listen attentively to the mourners to see where they are at, what's on their minds. You wait for them to speak, and then and only then do you offer a response. If anything, and ironically it is, I think the case, that Zoom shiva experiences have taught us something positive. We all would prefer an in-person experience when a friend or a loved one hurts. But through a Zoom Shiva experience, we do see this kind of action of silence taking place. You see a screen of faces, empathetic, caring, those who are there, and they are muted. All of the screens are silent so that we could listen to the story of a loved one from the vantage point of mourners. And then, and only then, one at a time, in chat or in auditory ways, we hear the words, usually carefully chosen words, of those who are comforters who would like to offer some additional words of comfort. In our world, silence may be a vacuum, but we can transform it into something that is far more of a presence, a space-filling, life-affirming presence. As the book of Psalms says in Psalm 65, for you, God, even silence is praise. For us, in our lives, silence can be a praiseworthy deed and something that we might accept and offer to others in our world as well. I hope we might embrace the power of silence. Shabbat Shalom, wishing everybody a very wonderful Shabbat. See you soon.